there was something that else that I needed to say uh, during the announcement uh, my, my, my time before the sermon and um, we we had prayed last week for Val and and that she would uh, some uh, a situation in the family happening and uh, uh, somebody tried to get her fired off of her job permanently they, they had taken her off of her job and uh, and so we prayed about it last week and uh, she called me I believe it was Thursday and told me that they they restored her and gave her all her payback so <laughs> Why was that important to say? So you see that prayer works when you believe, when you pray. So don't stop praying over stuff. And even if we don't know the whole situation, if you know it's something that we need to pray about, we just pray about it. And so she called me excited and she said, she said, Pastor, it, it went right back into place. She didn't tell me about the pay, but see, I, I, said, I said, did they put your money? She said, yes, they gave me all my pay back, and, and, and then I'll get a new schedule. And she started it yesterday. She, I, she said, I won't be here there Sunday. She said, but, uh, but I just wanted you to know that, that, that it worked. And, 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 and so I want to thank you for being a, a, a corporate prayer machine that causes stuff to happen. And nothing happens in the world until something. So you got to say something. I don't even want you to pray silent. I don't even understand that. I don't even understand moments of silence. Who are you doing that to? Amen. And and and, and we have to be the church that, that speaks loud and, and cry loud and spare not. And we have to say it. And you have to believe in prayer because it undergirds everything that we do. Amen. And along with that, I want to uh, do uh, special kudos to some, some other people, uh, to Tim and David, because quietly they always move people in this church some way or another. They help us out. They, they pick up our couches, our chairs, our tables, and they, they move for us. And so... So I, I'm, I'm grateful for his business that services us along with everybody else. Amen. Amen. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. I appreciate my, my worship team who's on duty every Sunday. And so we thank God for them and their faithfulness and, and, and how they prepare. It's not always easy. They have to learn new music. They, you know, they, they, they have a large repertoire. They have to cover a lot of things and, and, and stay current to the, the upcoming holidays and things. So we thank uh, the leadership of Pastor Marcy. and We thank her work with, with, with her, her, her gang. That's what I call this the, the band right here. This is her, her gang. And she's real protective of them. Y'all don't know that, do you? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She... <laughs> so, so we, we, we just thank God for the people that serve. Amen. 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 Now, everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Repeating after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in this time. Holy Spirit, take us to those places we need to be in. Bring back to my mind all of those things that you just charged us with for this hour in teaching and instruction. And God, we thank you that you are our sure provision. You are our power and we, we love you today. Jesus, we thank you for dying for us. And now, Lord, let the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. 
O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, amen, amen. amen. We're going to talk about grace power. Everybody say that, grace, grace power. I want to continue the subject of grace from uh, Wednesday night. And we talked about grace being the power to reign, grace being the power to reign. And I want to backtrack over a few things I said then. And, and, and we are able to rule slash reign in this world through grace. We are able to rule and reign through grace. And you might say, we're not in charge of anything, but you are. Even if the world doesn't see it or don't want to acknowledge it, you are. I believe it's because the church is still in the world that the, that, that, that the walls haven't fallen in and the lights haven't gone out. It's because the church is holy. And Jesus made a promise about the, the, the validity of the church and how strong the church would be. He, he, said, he said, even the gates of hell won't prevail against it. So I don't care how much hell is raised, even if it's inside the church, it won't prevail in stopping the church. Because the church is on a mission. And if you think I'm talking about a building, I'm not. I'm talking about an individual, individual churches. And that's who you are. Amen? Grace is God's empowerment. In other words, grace supplies the power to do extraordinary or extraordinary work. Work doing what? Advancing the kingdom of God. Grace is God's empowerment. And it supplies the power to do extraordinary work advancing the kingdom of God. Advancing the kingdom of God. And that's, that, that's our work. If you will, turn to 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, New King James Version. And, and that's the version we'll be in all day. 2 Corinthians 2 and 9. And this is Paul having, an, having a conversation uh, 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 with the Lord. This is red letter in the Bible. It's a conversation with the Lord about him having a problem, and he asked God to remove it three times. He asked God to remove it. And, 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 and boy, boy, this, this one scripture messes a lot of people up because we pray and we believe that God would do something, but the something that God does, he comes in and he tells us what he is going to do. That's when the will of God is known. Amen? Now, why did I say the will of God is known? First of all, Paul said he asked the Lord three times to remove the thorn in the flesh. Well, God could have just removed it, but God said, I have a will in this matter. And here is his will in the matter. He, and, and, and how do we know his will is in the matter? Because of, 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 of these five words, and he said to me, and he said to me, that means his will kicked in in a different place. Amen. Now, now you ask God to remove something, and then he comes back and he tells you what he's going to do about your situation. And what he said might be a little unsettling, but in his, in his say is, 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 is the remedy. All right? All right? And that, that's good for us because sometimes we want God to give us everything we ask for. But when he said, but I'd rather you do this. Yeah. See, the remedy is in God's will, not in your say. Oh, that messes us up. Because we think every time we ask for it, we ought to get it the way we ask for it. How many know it don't always work out that way? But how many know he does work some stuff out 
And it, it, it surprises you how he worked it out because you would have never worked it out that way. Because sometimes your ask is self-centered. It's only about you, but when God does something, he gets a better bang for his buck. It, it spreads farther. It's, 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 it's a word that I'm going to use. It's efficacious. That means it's efficient everywhere. Did you hear me? All right. He said, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. You want me to remove it, but my grace is sufficient. And, and, and today, all day, when I talk about grace, I'm also speaking of uh, power and ability. He said, no matter what's going on with you, my power and ability with you is greater. See, sometimes we want to present all of our weaknesses to the Lord. And he says, but you got me with you. Oh, boy, you didn't get that. You have me with you. Okay, okay, let me go on. And then he goes on to say, let me address your, 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 your weakness and strength area. He said, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And the weakness is yours because there's none in the Lord. My strength is perfected through your weakness. That means if you acknowledge your less, God can run in with his much. I'm weak. And first of all, let's decide that God knows who we are and where we are. He knows all of our shortcomings, and we don't have to keep presenting them every time we pray. God, you know. I, he's right there. The Bible says his eyes are in the earth. He's not watching the ground. He's watching you. His eyes in the earth. Amen. All right. He said, after that, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul is saying, he said, you know what? I'm going to start complaining. I'm going to stop complaining about what's wrong and start boasting in it. So that I can keep inviting God's grace, his power. See, see, see that word power is there. Up, up top, it was grace. They're the same. Yes. See, I'm going to keep bragging about my shortcomings. I'm not able to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway in the name of Jesus. I'm boasting in my infirmities. Yes. I ain't telling God about it. I'm boasting to you. Yeah, I'm sure, but I'm powerful in him. Yes. Does that make sense? The word weak in scripture means inability. God is saying, my grace power is optimum when you face situations that are beyond your ability to handle. Thank you, Jesus. I got help beyond my ability. Because some things I'm just not able to carry out. But, and we'll go on. God's grace makes it possible for believers to go beyond their own ability or limitations to operate in the strength of the Lord. Thank you, God. I don't have to rely on my strength. And that is frustrating for a, uh, for a lot of people. When they can't do something, they get frustrated and they try to create strength because they're strengthless. That's why in church I'm real careful about labels and titles because in, in the absence of anointing sometimes that's when we start going to titles and ranks because we start moving to supposed levels of importance when there's an absence of anointing. When anointing brings you levels of importance. Oh, God. Then you become archbishop. Everybody, if they're not a doctor, they're a bishop now. And if they're not a bishop, they'll be archbishop. And then there'll be a grand duke and then a grand duke. And, uh, 
I'm waiting for the first crowning of the, of the next pope. Because in the absence of real power, you want position. And what seems like authority. Does that make sense? It's all right to just be a good old-fashioned pastor. Walking in the anointing of God. Praying about stuff one Sunday. Seeing it happen by the next Sunday. That's the, that's the best result anybody can hope for. A am I in the right place? Yeah. We shared at the end of the lesson, or during the lesson on Wednesday, and I'm still in the introduction to this lesson. John Prevere's definition of grace, and, and it was a culmination of many scriptures, and get that tape uh, so you can hear it, uh, or CD. <laughs> and, 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 and it says, Grace is God's free empowerment that gives us the ability to go beyond our natural ability. See, we don't escape the fact that we have natural ability. You are able to do something in your natural ability. The, 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 the problem is, is when... Your natural ability is your resting place. One incident can change your natural ability into inability. Oh, God. Keep watching around you. And it's in that inability stage that you will find yourself feeling helpless and without because you've always relied on you and never acknowledged that there was a latent power on the inside of you that was operating with you. And I'm saying cooperate. Ooh. Here comes the first scripture for this lesson. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 through 11. And we're going to unpack these three verses. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 through 11. And this is Paul talking to the church of Corinth about his personal situation. But in it, we get the lesson for how crucial grace is in his life. And first of all, Paul opens up not with a, a statement of, 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 of false humility, but he says, for I am the least of the apostles whom am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. See, Paul was picked later. He was picked later. And before he was picked, Paul was a brilliant man. He was taught by the best. He was high, just so highly educated and so high in rank. But he was high in rank on the wrong side. Oh, God. Oh God. You can be important in the wrong places. And sometimes worldly importance don't translate to kingdom importance. I, I, does that make sense? So, so, so he said, because I recognize who I am, I wasn't with the, the original 12 that went down to 11 with one defector. He said, I was picked late. And, 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 and there's a testimony in there. It said, I, I'm not one of the guys. I'm not like them. But he didn't know God was getting ready to make him greater than them. Yeah. I'm not like them. The reason why I'm not like them, because some of them very guys I persecuted. Yeah. And some of those followers of Jesus, I, I, I made sure they got put to death. Yeah. Some of them I beat. Yeah. But God don't care. God knows the plans he has for you. 
And he don't see, see, see. see and, and so when Paul, Paul recognizing who he is, he said, for I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called. For, I, I don't even match up to them. They were right with Jesus. They didn't persecute anybody. They didn't. They just dealt with Jesus. And here, here, here comes uh, Jesus. Paul, why are you kicking against me? Saul, why are you kicking? Then he changed his name. That means nobody is above his use and nobody is beyond his grace. Then he goes on to say, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am what I am. Paul gave the grace of God all the credit for the, the change in his life. He was a changed man, forgiven, cleansed, full of love when he used to be full of hate. See, see that's what God does. He takes who you are and works on it. And some people think that you change to somebody else. He going to change you. He working on you. And, and <laughs> he's, see, the saving grace or power that saves us also changes us. Come on, come on. Grace changed Paul. You can't receive the grace of God without being changed by it. When you get saved, you, you, you get the grace gift. You get power to continue to change and to get better. Amen. You get better. You get better till finally we're on the stature of who Jesus is. He's growing us up. He's growing us up. He's making us better. But you got to allow the process. And you can't pretend like it. He understands who I am. Yeah, he does, but he wants you better. Because when he came in, he came in something to help you be better than what you were. But he didn't change you from being who you are. Does that make sense? Some of us expect to, I got saved, so when you look in the mirror, you're going to see, 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 we, we, we've been singing too much stuff. I looked at my hands, they look new. They still your same old hands. I looked at my feet, they did too, they still your same feet. Toenail, knee cutting, you know. Stained feet. <laughs> are are y'all out there? Amen. Does this make sense? Amen. And if you stand on them too long, them feet gonna talk to you. Amen. Same feet. See, but the grace gift causes those feet to run to different places and them hands to work different. All right. I had a friend, this might be a little awful story, but I, it just came up. And she asked the older saint, she said, my hands have broke out. She said, I, you know, you know, you know stuff to do. And she said, and the older saint said, said, you know, I can, I'll see what I can do, but you got to tell me where them hands been. <laughs> you see? <laughs> okay. No question. <laughs> Are y'all out there? Y'all still? <laughs> The changes don't come all at once. How many of you know I'm right about that? They don't come all at once. How many of you have seen the evolution of yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't come all at once. You see, the mark of a child of God is that by grace, the grace of God, he is what he is. What do you know about the grace of God? Well, well some people will offer this. I, I, I attend a place of worship regularly. But what do you know about the grace of God? 
I have always been on the upright, honest, truthful, and respectable side. Uh, I am glad to hear it, but what do you know about the grace of God? By the grace of God, we not only are what we are, but we also remain what we are. Ooh, what? See, at each stage of change, my name was still Lucille. So at this stage, it's still Lucille. Because that's who I am. Amen. How many know at each stage, you're still the same? But you're changing. But your name's still the same. Her name is Mommy. <laughs> His grace toward me was not in vain. Paul goes on, and I'm still unpacking these, those verses from 1 Corinthians 15, 9 through 11. His grace was not in vain. God. Sometimes we act like when we get saved, that God gave us something that's unusable. That's not the case. Paul said, looking that I'm, first of all, I'm the least of all of the other 11. I persecuted the church. But he said, he went on to say, but his grace that he spent on me was not in vain. The power that he put in me to do a work was not, not in vain. Amen. Come on, come on. You got to acknowledge that God did a complete work in you and that it's not in vain. Yes. What makes it in vain that you don't utilize it and you don't operate in it? You keep looking for something outside of you when he placed enough power in you to get the job done. Yes. So we keep looking for somebody to lay hands on us, lap us, uh, to zap us, and, 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 and pour water on us and to throw oil on us, and we'd be zonked somewhere. When My grace is enough. My power for you to keep moving and to work is enough. There's grace work. It's a, when you come to the end of you, then his grace helps keep you moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes you look back and you say, I don't know how I was able to do that. I don't know how we were able to accomplish that. And you just, you are amazed at what God did through you and for you. And much of what God does for you, with you, he, he, it's not that he did it for you, but he did it through you. Yes. Because you had to allow his cooperation to get the work done. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, God. He, you ask for something. You ask for a house. You just don't go sit down and say, I want a house. Fifteen years later, you'll still be a wanting somebody. But what you do, I'm going to fill out the application. But before, but before I fill out the application, I'm going to check my FICO score and my, my, my credit score. And they're going to they gonna, they gonna testify to me something. Okay. And what they testify will be part of the empowering grace that I'll have to get to my goal. What will it be? It'll say, work on this. Bring this balance down. Come within a certain range of, of, of the total money that you have. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then when it's time for the door open up, they might say no, but you can plead your record. Are, are y'all out there? Now, sometimes you'll squeak by, but you're going to pay for it. You don't want to squeak. 
You want to get the lowest interest rate, the lowest everything, and you don't necessarily want to pay the, 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 the homeowner's insurance, the loan insurance. God, that's just like raising the interest rate. Am I talking plain to somebody in it? Anybody ever bought a house recently in the last few you know, you, know, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. And then you ask God, you say, help me. Then, 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 then God can give you the ability to get enough down so they don't have to tack on nothing else. So there's two things that he's empowered you to prosper with. Amen. Oh, God. I didn't know where that lesson came from. Jesus Christ. Paul still labored with grace. So that it wouldn't be given in vain. So when you get grace, it doesn't mean I have grace so I don't have to work. Grace comes to help you work. <laughs> oh God, we got such 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 things about work. We we think that that God gave us work. And, 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 and the thing that he's trying to do with, he said, I'm, I'm going to work to work with you, but you come on, you join me. Let's collaborate. Yes. L let's do it together. Yes. Everybody say collaborate. collaborate. And, and the, God, uh, Pastor Preacher message, and I, I've referenced it a couple of times. He, God wants you to have some skin in the game. He, he wants you to have some works too. So, 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 so he just don't want his hand to be there and yours don't join him. Yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, you, we, we, we always want a freebie. Just give it to me. I don't want to do nothing for it. Give it to me. That's baby stuff. My grandbabies, they don't have to work for nothing. They dependent. You have nothing. <laughs> they dependent. Yes. Them new ones when they get here, they'll be dependent. But when you grow up, you better get independent. Because nobody going to Google and God got hungry. You'll be hungry and broke. And time. How many know I'm right about that? And they ain't going to even thank you cute. They might, but they ain't going to support it. Yeah, yeah, you look good, but you, you, you got a job? <laughs> it's the same in the kingdom. It's conceivable if Paul had not worked as hard as he did, he, he, he said, Paul, he went on to say, but I labored, this same verse that said his grace toward me was not in vain. He said, but I labored more abundantly than they all. That means, he, he said, after he had said, I'm not, I'm not in the same league as them apostles, but, but by the time he get down here, he said, them rascals, he said, I work more than all of them. Oh, God. Hey, see, see that? See, you, you got to call the record right. I, I wasn't in the original, but 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 I got called later, and out of undue circumstance, out of poor circumstance, but I recognized that I had great power within me that came when I got saved and received Jesus, that I could do a work. And he said, I made a decision. I'm going to work so hard that his work in me will produce something. Oh, God. Oh, God. So you don't get grace to become passive. You get grace to do a greater work. Ooh, are you out there? He said, I'm and, and, and I was reading the reference, and, and, and it said that, that, that Paul might have been calling some of them lazy on the side. Because sometimes you can get comfortable just being with Jesus. You can just get comfortable being in church. Oh, God. But Paul said, but I labored more abundantly 
than they are. And the fact that he said more abundantly, he said, not only did I labor, my labor had fruit. Oh, God. So you don't want to work and be fruitless. God. It, don't, it don't get you anything. It don't merit anything. And sometimes you have to wait for the fruit to show up. Through grace, Paul was who he was. Paul still labored with grace so that it wouldn't be given in vain. Conceivably, Paul had not worked as hard as he did. The grace of God would still have been given to him, but in some measure, it wouldn't be given in vain. It, it, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have worked as efficiently had he not operated in the power of grace. Grace, by def definition, is given freely. But how we receive grace will help determine how effective the grace gift is. Grace isn't given because of any works, past, present, or future. It is given to encourage work. So when I get the grace of God, God gave it to me so he can say, now you're able to work. Get up from there. You're able to work. Woo! He don't give you stuff so that you can't use it. You don't get a gift so you don't use it. I'm gifted. What do you do? Somebody has to beg you to use it. If they ask me, I'll, I'll come and... We want to use it. We want to use it. But it's his free gift to us. Let me move on. Grace is not only, it's several things. It's, it's the power to prosper. Because in order to prosper, it's some work involved. Grace is also strength. So when you're weak, he's strong. When you are, 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 have limited capabilities, you move in a, in a powerful way. I heard an interesting report, I'm going to try to recant it, that so many of our kids have been labeled ADHD and, 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 and attention deficit, and they found out something intriguing about those kids. Some of them, once they get on task, you can't take them off of it. And so companies are looking with, for kids or, or employees that have that slight penchant that we used to call a negative, but it turned out to be an empowering. Oh, no, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And sometimes when you slot a people in a certain thing, God will take that thing and say, said, you're going to discover that there might be a grace gift in there. And make it work for them. For we know that all things work together for good. He didn't say all good things, but he'll make it work. So you won't come up short. He'll make it work. So we are without excuses because he can make it work for you. But you rather back up and say, I'm not able. That's almost saying, I'm not saved. Yes. How many of you saved in the room? Amen. How many of you saved? It's not a trick question. Let me <laughs> Let's throw it on up. I, I'm saved. So, so when you got saved, you got grace. You got power to move. And, and when God gave it to you, he knew where you were short at. And his considering to bless you wasn't based on you were just so short, you were just you just so this, you 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 missed that, you you ain't able, you're not good enough, you know. That's none of his consideration. The only thing is you need to save it. So it could drop something else on you. My God. So grace is strength. Many Christians struggle 
Well, I want to give you this. 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 says, For we are God's fellow workers. We are his fellow workers. And, 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 and it goes on. I want to just make this statement. Many Christians struggle at this very point. Is God supposed to do it or am I supposed to do it? The answer is yes. To what part, Pastor? God does it and we do it. That's what the yes is for. God does it and we do it. Trust God, rely on him, and then get to work. Work as hard as you can. That is how we see the work of God accomplished in the earth. Paul said, I work more than any of them. And it's obvious because he wrote, he wrote most of the New Testament. He worked hard. They chronicled his missionary journeys. He, he went farther. And he wasn't with Jesus. He only, had, uh, he only met him on the, the road to Damascus that, that, that one time. He didn't eat with him. He didn't have to celebrate the Lord's Supper with him. He didn't swim with him. He didn't get in the boat with him. He didn't fish with him. He didn't wake up with him. He didn't do crusades with him. Oh, God. Sometimes you think you need to be that close for you to be effective. When all you need is one encounter with Jesus that changes you, loads you up full of grace power, that you can do more than you thought you could do. And Paul said, "Uh uh-huh. I was the least, but I'm the best. I'm the best today. And when he came to Peter and them, they didn't even receive him. Because you think, you didn't think God would use him. And he turned around and used him. Why? You can't look at anybody around you and say, oh, no, they they not ready. They just came in. They, they're just coming into the church. They, they they just getting it together. They, they you know, they, they got a little, you know, you know how we wink and nod. They got a little, they got a little stuff on them, you know, just, just you know, just. And then God bless they socks off and you sitting on the roadside just as religious as you want to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> Because you've been in the house with Jesus, but you never went to the country. Here is the ultimate goal. This is the conclusion. This is verse 11. It says, therefore, whether it was I or they. So he's balancing it off. He said, I work more than any of them. He said, "But, but whether it was me or them. So we, we're not different. I did more abundantly because I recognized the grace gift. He said, we preach and so you believe. See, it doesn't matter if Shirley preached. It doesn't matter if Annie preached. It said, whether it was I or them, so we preach and so they believe. Come on, come on. The goal is to get believers. So that's why the church down the way ain't void. The church that's got 5,000, they're no different than me here because we preach. Now you may go for whatever celebratory things that attract you there, but the bottom line is, are they preaching? Come on, come on, come on, come on. We preach so everybody can believe. Come on, some. Are, are you out there? So, 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 so when Lindy go to preach, when, when, when Carolyn go to preach, well, they not a pastor. So, whether it was I or them, so, everybody say so. We preach. And the outcome is, say them last two words. That's the goal. 
That's the abundant work. Paul said, I preached more than any of them because I wanted great gain for the kingdom. But everybody gets the credit because we're on the same team. We're doing the same job. And we're getting the work done. And that will stop us from being divisive and, 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 and separatist um, from each other. Because when people believe on the resurrection of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we all go into the kingdom together. Come on, come on, come on. The goal ought to be, I don't want you lost. I don't want you lost. I don't, I don't want to go to a funeral and, 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 and know that, 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 that there is no, no, no semblance that, that there was a heavenly impartation into you. That you even understood Jesus Christ. So we preach. Us and them. And you believe. Grace power. What we're trying to do is load people up with power to do a work in their inabilities, in their weaknesses, so that they can go forward. So we preach. And they believe. I need to say it again. So we preached. And they believe. So we slept. So we were lazy. So we were distracted. So we had an agenda. So it was not important to think about. You only need the grace gift to do kingdom work while you work it. God can't work nothing with somebody that won't work. And we keep wanting to do a magic act over us. Alakazam, Alakazoo. And it don't happen. And the first thing you say is God didn't work. No, he worked, you didn't. So we And who believe? Blessings to you in Jesus' name. My God. My God. Father, we thank you. Every two persons, just take somebody else by the hand. Look at them and tell them, so you preach. And as you preach, they will believe. Inside of you is power. It's called grace. You have enough to cover, to cover every shortcoming, to go around every shortcoming, to conquer fear, to conquer doubt, to bring gain. I'm talking to you. Give God a good praise in this house. Hallelujah. You're empowered to do it. You're empowered to do it. You got what you need. And when stuff starts breaking around you, it wasn't that it wasn't possible. It's because God made your, your ability great. That's why we can leave out of this room and you can lay hands on somebody and they can recover. He just needs your hand to get there. Yeah. I can't, but until Pastor get here, you.